Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to composite explosions inside of Nuke. Here I have an explosion from Acton VFX. Um, I feel like they have the best assets for compositing, in my opinion. There are plenty of other places to download uh, stock footage like this, but I really like this one. It's a, I think it's a gas explosion. Yeah, it's a large explosion from their collection. Uh, anyways, so as you can see, this format's kind of weird. Um, I didn't change the format, but if you are going to change a format, uh, like I have the free version, the non-commercial one, so obviously I could not render this. So what you want to do, add a reformat, uh, 1920 by 1080. So as you can see, the explosion no longer fits into the picture. So then you want to add a transform, hold control and click and drag to like the base, and then you can just move it up like that. Um, and then you can, of course, you can scale it down if you need to. Uh, but the reason why I'm bringing this up is because you want to do the reformat and the transform at the very beginning, like this, of your chain. Um, the reason why is because if you add it, like, at the end, like, say you forgot to do that or something, and you did all your color grading, it's not going to line up over the plate very well. Also, it'll have, let me see if I can show you. So as you can see, there's like a harsh cutoff line and it'll kind of bleed over like this. Uh, this is not really that big of a deal in this particular case, but you always want to make sure to do your reformats first. That goes for all stock footage, not just explosions. Okay, so let's get into the, uh, how I did all this. So as you can see, there's before and after. So we're going to kind of work with that and I'll kind of walk you through what I'm thinking. So the first thing I like to do, uh, obviously this is pretty solid. Like this is actually filmed. Like they let off a real explosion. This is not CG. So obviously you could leave it like this, but you know, uh, that's kind of our job as compositors is to make it look good. I have a node that I created. It's called true gamma. And as you can see, all it is, is that gamma, it's just a gamma node, but with that color space, uh, thing that I have shown before. And all it does is it gammas down without changing the saturation. So I can, um, it keeps saturation when you gamma up or it keeps it when it's going down. So I have that link in my Patreon, by the way, uh, it's down below. It's, it's for free. You just have to go join my Patreon for the free membership and you can go download my tools. I have a few other ones as well. Um, it just kind of combines it into one node. So you don't have to keep creating these three nodes every time. Uh, it also has a mask feature if you need the mask. Anyways, long story short, uh, I just added a little bit of gamma into that. And then what you want to do is you want to break off a luminance key. And what I did was I keyed the very bright parts. So I did like 0.5 on the A roughly, and then the B all the way up to one. Uh, and then what that does is I gained up, I doubled the gain. So let me zoom in here. So here's before. As you can see, it's kind of clipped, like the values down in the R, G, and B are not even one yet. Uh, turn that on and they go above one, so it's kind of overexposing it. But if you look at real life footage of explosions, they pretty much blow out the entire frame, um, depending on the time of day or whatever. Uh, and also, kind of want to mention, I kind of do explosions in like groups of three. So I have three gray nodes and then I have three glow nodes and that's kind of my base. And then depending on the plate you are compositing the explosion to, you might have to add more or take off. It doesn't matter. Uh, but this is pretty much my base workflow right here. So that was the first one. So getting the highlights and making them, I would say more white. And of course, every stock asset is going to be different, but this is the one that I was grading for this shot. So then you take another keyer. And this time get even more tight with that. So this time I set the B to two to get the extremely bright ones and the A almost to one. And what I did here was the same thing. I doubled the gain and I don't know if you can see it on YouTube, but I'm basically now I'm pinging out the highlights. All, all I'm doing here is adding some pretty subtle detail, but it is an important step into making it look realistic and look good. And then finally, this keyer is going to be a reverse keyer. So you want to invert this. So that way we can get 
the darker details right here and all I'm doing is making it more red and how I do that is you click on the gamma color wheel and click and drag towards like the orangey uh, red area because uh, I thought it's just kind of washed out in my opinion I wanted it to have a little bit more of a a deeper color so that kind of covers the grading part right here so let me turn all these off before and after so as you can see you know it, it's starting to look pretty good uh, we got the color down, the values down, so now what we're going to do is start adding the glows. So kind of a similar process, you want to take a key or a node and get the, the very highlights. So again, almost to 1 and then increase the B to 2. Which if you don't know how to do that, if, you've never, if you didn't know you can go above 1, so here's a key here. So this is default right here, obviously 0 to 1, but you can go up. And then I do 0.9. So this number right here, the B and also A, uh, I don't really mess with C and D very much, but the B and A, you can you can go way above one if you wanted to. Uh, just letting you know in case you did not know that. So for these glow nodes, since I'm only applying the glow, uh, you want to pre-molt whatever you keyed out. So you get these values right here. Uh, this first one right here is going to be a little bit more of a an isolated glow so it's a little bit tighter. I use AP Glow. I think I've mentioned that in other videos before. So I have the intensity set to 3, uh, the max size of 500. This comes at default like 2000, I think. Um, I think everything else is default besides the tint. Uh, so this is what it's doing. And then, of course, you plus it on top. So this might not look very much here. And let me go back a different frame. So like, let's go to like one of these frames. Okay, so now you can see. Here's the alpha, pre-molt it, uh, add the glow, and then you plus it. So this is what the first glow node does. It kind of gives it a little rim effect, roughly. And then the second node, or the second glow node, is going to be from the same keyer. So this one. Uh, so here, the difference is it's going to be a little bit more brighter and a little bit more uh, color. Uh, so here's the settings for this one. It's the same intensity, uh, but with a higher response. And the max size a little bit bigger so it's just a the same glow but a little bit broader and whenever you plus that on top you can see now we're starting to get that kind of blooming effect that you see in a lot of explosion uh, videos and so obviously you could stop there but uh, we want to have a more a broader glow okay so now we're taking a nuke here and we're leaving it default we're pre molting it uh, and then we're adding another AP Glow. This one is very broad, so I lower the intensity. I also forgot to mention, I, I set it to a effect only on all of these, I believe. Yes, on all of these. And then, so what you want to do is effect only, lower the intensity, increase the max size. So it's kind of broad. So if I gain up here, you can see it takes up the majority of the frame. So max size, 3,000 roughly. And then from here, you just plus it on top. And as you can see, this is more of a broad kind of glow. So now if I disable all the glows before and after, now we're getting that really cool looking explosion glow that you see in Hollywood movies. Another thing I forgot to mention, so I kind of ran into an issue when I was doing the AP glow node with this particular asset because this is a weird format. Um, for some reason, if you turn off crop to format, and change the channels to RGB, it works somehow that it doesn't have a weird streak effect. And I did that for all of these, so just keep that in mind. If you have a vertical explosion format, uh, that's something to play around with to see if that does the same thing for you. Now, obviously, if yours is in a wide aspect ratio, then you won't have to worry about that. Um, but if you're using the same ones that I'm using for Max and VFX or other places that are vertical. Uh, I kind of found out just it was on RGBA, but change it to RGB and then turn off the cropped format for some reason works. But that is how you composite a, an explosion. And of course, this will change depending on your plate or whatever else. Okay, here is the shot cached out now. So as you can see, uh, the glow is really, it pings out. And it, it's a lot broader whenever the explosion first hits off because the values are pretty high up. 
which that's actually pretty realistic if you look at references. And then it kind of slowly dies off, but keeps that good color uh, depth and stuff. Okay, that covers this tutorial. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about this, write them down in the comments down below. Leave a like on the video and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.